Uh, at this point, I want to invite Ken Russell up to share with us from our international partnerships in Uruguay. We actually support three families in Uruguay. Um, I, I failed to write it down, my bad, but come on up here, Ken. Um, so, but it's, it's, it's three families that are spread throughout Uruguay, and they have some fantastic stories, and we are so thrilled to have an ongoing partner and relationship with them. So, Ken, can I just pray before we invite you to start speaking? Sure. All right. right. Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of Ken Russell. Thank you for the gift of people that are passionate about your word, passionate about seeing Jesus and walking in obedience to you. Help us to be both intentional and generous. Bring life to your church worldwide, Father. May we be a people of pro profound truth and profound grace. Thank you for Ken. May his words resonate with the spirit in our hearts, and may the texts and the sh news that he shares with us be a testimony to your work in this world. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. My pleasure to be with you this morning. Not only me, but also my wife, Eunice. Uh, she's a vital part of my, uh, my existence. And in case I forget, uh, she has some of these... Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'll get my Bible. That's fine. Uh, I didn't realize that. Uh, my wife has some of these prayer cards. So those of you who would like to be remembering us in prayer, please go over to Eunice, and she'll be glad to give you one. There's also going to be one on the... There is one <laughs> on the board. And uh, so we really need your prayers. That's the reason for us being here today, as well as for saying thank you for all these years that you've been behind us in Uruguay. Uh, every month we're reminded that you're here <laughs> and that not only you're giving, but that you're praying as well for what is going on in Uruguay. And it was great to have the visit of some of you back a couple of years ago, as well as Ted and Val, uh, just at the time of COVID. <laughs> well, all of you did something this morning that I would like to pick up on. Well, I figure most of you did anyway. You spread some butter on a piece of toast. You spread some jam, maybe, some honey or some peanut butter. No, no. I love peanut butter and honey. That's, I could eat nothing else. <laughs> well, spread. Spread it. And we want, I'd like to get, spread it right to the edge of the, of the toast, all the way around, you know? Make sure that it's all covered. And that's how God wants us to spread the gospel. All around the world. Every nation, every tribe, every language, nobody excluded. That is our loving God who wants his message of salvation to reach everybody. So before we show you the slides of Uruguay, I'd like to share a couple of verses. They're in Second Thessalonians chapter 3. where it says in verse 1, Finally, brothers, pray for us. And why? Pray for us that the message of the Lord may spread rapidly and be honored, just as it was with you. And pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil men, as if such a thing exists. For not everyone has faith, but the Lord is faithful, and he will strengthen and protect you from the evil one. We have confidence in the Lord that you are doing and will continue to do the things we command. May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. What a lovely finish to that. Please pray. 
May the Lord direct your hearts into God's love and Christ's perseverance. God's love is the major thing that will keep us on track for Christ. God's love for us is what will keep us motivated to live holy lives, to put away sin out of our lives so that we can really honor and glorify the Lord Jesus Christ who gave himself for us on the cross as we've been remembering this morning. So, as Paul says here, we have confidence in the Lord. How wonderful to be confident in the Lord that he will do these things, that he will be working in our lives. Uh, we not only get older, <laughs> we not only shrink or get wrinkles and all those things, we're also being transformed to the image of Christ. And while that is our purpose for being in Uruguay, is that that little green blob on the map of South America, that that whole country be covered, be spread with the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. There it is again, and those are the countries of South America. Uh, I've visited Argentina. We've packed a little bit of Brazil, a little bit of Paraguay you know, once a, a number of years ago, but Uruguay is the center of our focus. Three million people, three million and a half, who need to hear Christ. Living in a country that since the early 1900s has been devoted to atheism, religion is for the weak and the ignorant. Or as I was remembering yesterday with the men uh, when we went down with my parents in 1968, the common saying was, religion is for the skirts, for women and priests. Well, things have changed now. Neither one uses skirts. <laughs> but uh, still, religion is for the weak people. So that is what we're up against. This is our flag uh, that we see flying, and whenever we see it, that is where our hearts are. This is a little bit of the country, what it looks like. You see the palm trees. You think of Florida. <laughs> well, that's about what we are at, but south of the equator. The land is generally quite flat. There are some rolling parts. Some of our birds, this is our version of the robin. And this is an interesting bird because if you just happen to walk across a field, you'll scare its nest and that bird will just start flying around you screeching. So the whole world hears that there's somebody intruding in that property. It's better than a watchdog. And there we have our parliament buildings. It is a democracy at this time. Uh, right now, it is a right-wing government. Uh, we have had uh, three terms of left-wing, which brought in a lot of changes to our country, uh, bringing in all the, the new agenda that is going around the world. But we are thankful for freedom to preach the gospel in this country. And uh, this is a city right close to us, just 50 kilometers away. It was settled in the 1600s by the Portuguese, one of the older cities in Uruguay, and a tourist resort now. So this was, as I say, it was built by the Portuguese, but then taken over by the Spanish and also by the English, and was the center of wars for quite a, quite a while. Today, it is a part of our country. 
very common whenever you go to a city is in the center of town, the Roman Catholic Church and a monument to the national hero. 60% more or less of Uruguayans have a tradition of Roman Catholicism, uh, which means that they know who Jesus is. But that's about as far as it goes. Very few people actually attend church. And most of the Roman Catholics don't believe in all the images. They don't believe in the priests. They don't believe even in the Bible. But they're Roman Catholic. And when you knock on the door to give them a tract, they'll tell you, oh, I'm Roman Catholic. So I don't need to talk about religion. <laughs> so it's just an excuse to get you off their back. But it is a, an open door. It is an open door because there is a certain knowledge that we can pick up on and present the gospel that way. We moved to Rosario 48 years ago with Eunice. We moved there with the purpose of establishing a new church because there weren't any around for a radius of, uh, radius is from the center out, right? All right, I get confused sometimes. Okay, so a radius of 130 kilometers. So 130 kilometers in any direction, there was no church of our group. There were other churches, Jehovah's Witness, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But we felt that the Lord was calling us to go and establish a work there. So we put a radio program on the local station, and we asked the Lord for six contacts in six months to confirm that it was his idea that we go there and not just something that we were thinking about. Well, he gave us those six contacts in six months, and that has never happened since. So we, to this day, realize God called us there. And that is important because there are times when the work is very slow, and it is in Uruguay. You don't build up a church from one day to the next. So there were periods when you, you, we would ask ourselves, well, is this the place where we should be? Did we do the right thing coming here? Uh, was this God's will? And so it is at times like that that you really need to be convinced, yes, the Lord did bring us here. We just have to be we read about it, the perseverance of Christ. <laughs> so we bought this building uh, 40 years ago, uh, once work got established. And it was interesting because we had a group from the OM ships, Operation Mobilization. Uh, the, at that time, it was the Dulos. And uh, so we had a group of uh, 12 young people from various countries, and they worked with us in tent campaigns and going door to door for approximately three weeks. They lived in our house. Eunice was cook, chief cook and bottle washer. <laughs> and uh, well, we had a great time with them. But one of the things that they said was, you guys need a church, because we were just meeting in our garage. So they said, we're going to pray about it. And it was six months later that a knock on the door came and offered us this building. It was an Adventist church. They were moving out to go to another city. And they wanted the place to go to a, another religious group. So we were able to purchase this place. A lot of improvements have been made since then. But when you go to a city, how do you establish contacts with people. One was door-to-door. -door, uh, that We did hours and hours and hours of that. But also working with children. That was one of the favorite things that we did. This is the housing project. So we just go there with a guitar, a ball, and a Bible lesson and kick the ball around a little bit and you have half a dozen or a dozen kids and other games. And we had uh, years in this spot. In fact, there is 
brother and a sister who would announce our, our arrival. I guess they knew when we would be arriving, more or less. So they'd see the car drive up, and they'd run down the staircase of their apartment building. The singers have arrived. <laughs> so that was the official announcement, and before long, we were surrounded by kids. So that was 40 years ago that we were doing it, and even a little bit more. And today, in the same housing project, but with other people, the next generation has come along, and we have uh, actually the boy in the green there that you can see, and you'll see him in the next picture too. Uh, he was one, shall we say, through a kids program on the other end of the city. But he and his sister started going to the kids class. They got saved, uh, went on, got away from the Lord, messed things up a little bit, but God is gracious and forgives. And today they are back in fellowship and serving the Lord. So uh, at this group, it was interesting because uh, somebody invited a family that they knew, and they had nine children. So we know them as uh, those of nine, uh, to translate from Spanish, los de nueve. So uh, here we have nine kids from one family, or one house, I should say. They are actually three families. Um, they live with their grandmother because their parents are in jail due to drug um, abuse or robbery, etc. So um, we have quite a ministry to these nine kids, helping with food, clothing, and they're always at Sunday school. And of course, open air kids' classes brings you to the church where they're in Sunday school. And we usually have 30, 40 kids in Sunday school. Most of them from families that are not Christians, that are not in the church. So there's a time for snacks, a time for Bible lessons. The teachers do great, uh, innovative lessons <laughs> for the kids. And here we have a time of games outside. That is one of our granddaughters standing with her back to the camera. And this is our daughter-in-law playing with the kids. After one of these programs, a mother put up on her Facebook. Uh, she had asked her child, how was the program today? And he says, the best day of my life. <laughs> so she says, thank you for so much love. And that really is what it is all about. Showing kids love, the love of Christ, that they can understand too, that God loves them the way they are and wants to be in their lives. Eunice has a continuous ministry with the ladies. This is a Bible study, actually held in the home of our son and daughter-in-law. They live just six blocks away from us, so we're privileged to have part of our, part of our family there. And on, on another occasion, the ladies got together for a barbecue. Now, you see, the men have a monthly barbecue, and the ladies used to complain. <laughs> we don't get a barbecue, they say. Uh, I'll make one, we say. <laughs> well, finally, one of the... One of the husbands uh, took pity on our sisters and uh, um, gave them a, a barbecue on a night in their house. And then also, uh, every other month, more or less, they'll have a ladies' outreach. The purpose of this isn't so much the fellowship among the ladies of the church, but for the ladies to invite others. And so, as you can see, a nice group gets together. And one of the things that we are happy about is the generations that you see in that picture. It's not all older ladies. Uh, you have older ladies, you have younger ladies, you have young ladies, and you have young people, and uh, even some of the kids. So that is uh, very important, we feel, uh, reaching out to the ladies. 
Oh, and here's Eunice. She's bowling for a, a prize at a Mother's Day activity. This is another occasion when, through the children, we were able to bring in families. And speaking of families, here's ours. You, there you know Andrew, yeah? You can see Andrew, you can see Leticia, and uh, you can see Annie over there on the other side. Uh, that next to her is a cousin, actually. There's Nacho, yes, yes, Nacho and Amy at the back end there. So you know some of these pictures. And uh, there's Mark and Sylvia. Uh, just a little note about Mark and Sylvia, because you don't know them so well. Uh, Andrew and Leticia have been with you on different occasions. But Mark and Sylvia teach English. And uh, about 30 years ago, Andrew and Mark started this up as a private enterprise. They had been teachers with uh, another school. And so starting up on their own with six students, praying every year for students so as to be able to make ends meet, <laughs> Uh, they hit the 20, 2002 depression that was pretty well worldwide, and uh, they really had to struggle through that. But today they have over 200 students and two other teachers helping them. And God has really used them to share the word with others. There are a number of people who have gone to the meetings students as well as their parents who are, re are a result of the contact of that institute. Sometimes they've thought of going into the Lord's work full time, but at the same time they realize that they have a ministry there that they wouldn't have if they were missionaries because a missionary doesn't have contact normally with a doctor, an engineer, uh, other professionals and that is a whole sector of our population that they have free access to and they are respected by here we are doing track distribution uh, this goes on to this day we try to spread the word over the city and the cities around us every year and visits to seniors homes uh, unfortunately, seniors' homes are often a place to deposit the people that are a nuisance now. That's awful. But that's how it is. And so they really uh, are thankful for visits, and especially when we go with kids or young people to sing and do a, a, some theatrical work. There you can see uh, Mate and Thermos. If you have been here with Rob and Cecilia, I'm sure Rob and Cecilia came here with their Mate and Thermos because they live with it. Uh, we come up and we get uh, infected by coffee. <laughs> and this is a smaller home. Um, I believe uh, Bill and Valerie were with us in this home. It's just a small one. The, the, older, the owners are Christians, and so they've had the joy of seeing many of the seniors come into their home, hear the gospel, and accept it. And when they, go in, when they leave this world, they go to God's presence. So that is a wonderful ministry, reaching people at the last moment. Actually, we're... Uh, praying for this man, Kenke. And uh, he's a man who was brought up typically uh, atheist from childhood. Uh, not a very good family situation, quite normal in Uruguay. And a few years ago, he had a cataract operation and he wasn't careful. He just continued a normal life. And, well, that affected the operation, and he lost his vision altogether. So he's blind. And in this situation, he has come to the home. So here he is now in a place where he's hearing the gospel, 
so we've been there to sing and to uh, share the word a couple of times. And bit by bit, he has warmed up. <clears throat> and the last time we were there, uh, he says, give me a hug. Yeah. So the word is getting into this man's life. Another thing we see as years go by, kids that are brought up in Sunday school and continue in the Lord's things, and they get married. And here is a young lady who was from our area. And in spite of family turmoil, she has continued on for the Lord and has married a fine young man. He was from Mercedes, which is where my brother Robert is working. And, well, this time we won because he came to our city. So we have a new couple, and they're on fire. They're, they're good with kids and young people. And then, oops, and then we have this other couple, a little bit different, also brought up uh, from happy hours, kids' meetings, and up through youth groups, and now married. They have moved to the capital city, which is quite common because uh, there's not a lot of work in our area. So if you're not a farmer or if you're not willing to sweep the street, you go to the capital city. That's almost how it is. So uh, he's a mechanic, and she's studying uh, administration, if I remember rightly. So do pray for them. Uh, actually, they live close to and are attending the church where our son Andrew is and Leticia. So they're being followed up, and we trust that they'll go on and be useful to the Lord. Uh, another event that we put on regular, regularly in the church is a couple's banquet. And so every other month, every three months, uh, we'll have this banquet. And this couple on the right, uh, Germán and Rosa, uh, he's one of our elders. And at the same time, they have this program. They organize it. And on this occasion, they invited other missionaries. They're from Germany working on the East Coast, and they brought us a good talk for the couples. And again, the idea of this is not just for the couples, but for the couples of the church to invite their friends. So among them, uh, Mark and Sylvia had occasion to invite a couple, and uh, this man is now the mayor of the city. So it is interesting how God's, uh, God works in people's lives. So that's one of the uh, banquets there. Just, uh, our city is about to turn 250 years old. And uh, they're aware at the mayor's level and the mun municipality that uh, there's not a lot of meeting between the people. You have your different associations, your different uh, uh, businesses, and they're all sort of segmented. They're competition and not coming together to do things as a, uh, as a city uh, to achieve certain goals. So they put on this fair as one of the attempts to uh, achieve this. And so we were able to put a booth in that fair, selling books, and uh, to help people to come, because Uruguayans don't do a lot of reading. So we sold some food products, and our son, who uh, produces honey, uh, he was selling some honey. And so this attracts people so that they come and can have conversations with them. Uh, during COVID, and even before, in our city, there were a lot of people out of work. And so the Christians started uh, collecting food items, dry food items, for giving to people. And also here we have donations that come from a business that before the th food goes out of date, they usually destroy it. But now they donate it and we were able to 
go every day, collect what's going to be destroyed, and give it to people in need. And here's the family of nine. <laughs> they are receiving some of the goodies, and they're getting nice donuts. A lot, not very many families down there get to eat donuts. And so these kids are privileged, really, <laughs> getting these donuts. That's, uh, this is the table of things that is given by the church members. Well, we move to Rosario, and all this that we've been talking about goes on in Rosario, but close to us, the Lord opened the doors to share the word in another city called Esilda Polier. You all have seen that on the newsletters. And this was a family that, from Mon the capital city, they bought a farm, needed somebody to work the farm, so they had a Christian couple move here to Esilda Polier and work the farm. But not only did they work the farm and produce milk and sell milk to the people around, especially the lady was a great uh, communicator and shared the gospel with the clients. And so a little while afterwards, the owner of the property asked us at a conference, would you be able to go and visit this family? Because we were the closest ones to them. So fine, we started visiting. And nine months later, we put the tent on the property. The property came right out of the farm. It came right out to the main street of the town. So it was in a great spot. And we were there another nine months with the tent. And all the people that attended were contacts of this family. So that shows the importance of the mission that you, as an individual, can fulfill. Uh, all of us are missionaries. We are all uh, messengers to take the word. And this family is an example of someone who the Lord used. So today we have this group of young people. They're not a lot, but we, thank, we are thankful for them. And also a group of adolescents. And here again, uh, this new group, because this is almost 40 years later from this lady and her husband that we're talking about, uh, but here again, it is another young couple. And here is a, a young man, he'd be about 30 years old. He'd go with a soccer ball and his son, and just to kick the ball around in a field beside their house. But of course, Uruguay, soccer, uh, before long, they had a bunch of kids around. And so using that friendship established with the children in his neighborhood, all of these kids that you see in these pictures, in this picture, uh, there are about 15 kids there. Ten of them come from his neighborhood. They're a result of that, kicking the ball around with his child, with his boy. And pray for the boy. The boy is now an adolescent. He's 15 years old. And you know what happens around 15 years old? Quite often, kids want to break loose and experiment what goes on in the world around. Uh, reading the Bible and going to church just might be something that they're not wanting to do. And so uh, very often, and as is happening with this boy, he's into soccer, he's an excellent player, he's already been contracted by, a, by, a, by a, a team. So the world is pulling, right? So do pray for these kids as they face these things that I'm sure that they occur here too. Oh, those are the bicycles that get piled up outside on a typical Friday night. Uh, here's the Bible study around the ping pong table. And uh, you can see on the right the brother that I'm mentioning who was instrumental in bringing all these kids. And he's leading the group in our absence. And we study the Bible. We uh, go through the uh, gospel or some of the smaller books, uh, verse by verse, 
ap applying it to the kids' lives, and they participate. A Christmas program. Sorry, no snow on the field. <laughs> uh, Christmas time for us is midsummer. Uh, another great opportunity to reach the parents. And here's the baptism. Two young ladies taking this important step, uh, showing their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. One has a family that has been exposed. In fact, uh, the girl on the right is the granddaughter of one of the first ladies to attend, who was actually demon-possessed when she met, uh, went to the tent. And whenever we prayed, she'd start to uh, cry, to uh, breathe deeply. It was quite an experience. But the Lord freed her from that experience. And here we see her daughter uh, in the middle and the granddaughter beside her. And the other girl from a non-Christian family. Uh, COVID, you had COVID, we had COVID, and that allowed us to go online. And so here is a Christian who came up through our kids' classes in another city, and uh, he's watching the, the uh, meeting, uh, living 400 kilometers away. So COVID had its difficulties, but it had its blessing as well. And then also, we got a space on the local program a TV program on a YouTube channel. And so the word is going out on in this way, covering this whole city with the word. And somebody had the idea, Christmas time, we can't have a Christmas program, we can't have people come to the, uh, to the church. What, how, what can we do for Christmas? And somebody said, well, let's do this program, but also make these signs. So we had signs put around the city and seven of these signs, gospel verses, that people were able to read. They lasted quite a while too before kids broke them. <laughs> but they get repaired and redone. Here we're having an Emmaus course studying First Thessalonians with some Christians in a neighboring city. Uh, even to this day, we've continued this, uh, this way because some aren't able to attend, whereas on, online they are. So this is Jim Fleming on the left. He's the international director of Emmaus, and we had his visit back in March and visited different of the uh, centers that are using the courses. Here is a lady who's doing a great job with uh, Bible studies with ladies and also with young people, with children, doing these courses. We spoke of the radio programs, and these are on the air now uh, on five different stations. One of them is RTM. That is actually TWR in English, Trans World Radio. And so we are thankful for this program, which covers the whole country. All of Uruguay listens to this program, and we've had over 200 people write in asking for Bible courses. There in Juan Lacase is another door that the Lord opened for us, and this is the group celebrating their anniversary 30 years in this church. And this it's right on the River Plate. So across that body of water there is Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, so they're having a baptism, another great opportunity, sharing the word with family and friends. And finally, the Lord opened the door in Tadadivas. And uh, it is a small group still. It is the only city that doesn't have its own people uh, who are preaching the word. Uh, the other cities all have leaders, people who are taking on uh, leadership in the in the churches uh, here they are still dependent on receiving help from outside so every every week now in our absence there is a different church that goes and helps them out uh, there's a family that has this coach that they use for 
taking high school students to school. So uh, they also use it for the church group, taking us to different activities. This is the couple, uh, shall we say, the mainstay in this city, in this testimony. And the lady in the center, uh, our first contact with her was, remember when we asked the Lord to sh confirm with us if we should move to Rosario, so we put the radio station, a radio program on the local station, six contacts in six months. Well, this lady was w one of those contacts. And she continued doing Bible, school, uh, Bible courses and was saved through them and baptized later on. And here she is today with her family serving the Lord in this other city. Bible camps. Uh, we know this place. Uh, it's mainly tents that we use on, on this location. There are three camps in Uruguay, one on the Atlantic coast, we're in the center, and then Rob and Cecilia are on the other side of the country. And so uh, here we are developing it bit by bit. Uh, there's work going on all the time. And this is one of the kids' uh, camps. The fellow in the yellow shirt, uh, he and his brother went to the kids' session last year. And they're continually angry. Uh, you couldn't touch them. <laughs> uh, if they'd be playing in the water and somebody would go by and splash them, and right away it was a, a big snarl and uh, fists and whatnot. But in just two days, it was incredible the change in their attitude and in their life. The last day, it was funny to see them because they were right in the middle, uh, splashing and being splashed and enjoying it. So what a little bit of love can show. We know the family, and we realize why it is that the kids are the way they are. They surely need God's love in their lives. Another group at the campsite. You can see a little bit better the structure in behind. Uh, volleyball with a balloon full of water. That's a lot of fun in the summertime. And there's a man there that you might recognize. <laughs> so uh, he's uh, making animals with the balloons there. So uh, the kids really enjoyed it. No Spanish or very, just a few words, eh? But uh, he was being used of the Lord. During COVID, keeping the distance. <laughs> we have a lovely beach, so the kids have excellent place for games. And then come evening, marshmallow roast and wieners. I'd like to focus on this bus. Uh, it is a vital part of getting the word out to the last corners of the country of Uruguay. And you can see about 40 people in front of the bus. So this is an activity that goes on the month of February. So there's a tent that the Christians have made, uh, the bus, and it goes around a, s a week in each city. So you have four cities that are covered during the month of February, and 40 people are always on deck serving the Lord uh, voluntarily and sometimes it'll be to fix the motor or something that goes wrong with the bus but that's not very often but the first day that you arrive in a city up goes the tent so that is a lot of work it is a big structure as you can see here it's uh, fairly big and this is only part of it because it is actually bigger smaller tents for the kids that are sleeping sometimes like in our city of Juanacase the ladies sleep in the church building and then the, the fellas in the tent or the tents. This is a kid's activity. Lots of kids generally attend and time of games. But after the Bible lesson, we like to divide them into groups and so they'll go according to age 
according to sex as well, and they'll have a more intimate time to uh, take the message that they've heard and apply it to the lives of the kids and make sure that the kids understand the gospel. And sometimes, and this is the goal, it'll end up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, some child who says, I want to accept the Lord as my savior. And this does happen. We're thankful for that. Yesterday I shared with the fellas, uh, I was seven years old when I accepted the Lord. My wife was eight years old when she accepted the Lord. It does happen. My brother Robert was five years old when he accepted the Lord. So uh, God is gracious and opens the minds and the hearts of children. This is the adult group at night. And it's always harder to get adults. But it is a great help to have all those 30, 40 uh, helpers who have been giving out tracts and have covered the city with invitations. And then they're in the tent at night, uh, participating, giving their testimonies, singing, di doing different things, sketches. And so that attracts. It helps people to have less fear of coming close. And this happens sometimes. <laughs> and so you get all the kids standing around the tent, hanging onto the poles <laughs> so that it doesn't get blown away. And even in spite of the fact that it is tied down. And in the, one of the smallest cities that the tent goes to every, every year, here they go every year, uh, they get 120 kids. Uh, other places, even bigger cities, will get 30, 40, 50 kids. 120 they get. And as you mentioned, the boxes, these boxes, we receive them. We have in the past received from Canada. Unfortunately, they've changed, and now we receive from the States. But uh, they're still welcome. <laughs> but you should see the 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 expressions on the faces of the kids when they receive the boxes and uh, open up and uh, it's really wonderful. And stories too of uh, kids who received things, exact things that they needed. It could be a pair of socks, it could be an undershirt, it could be something for school, different items that they have received in that little box that was just what they needed. And parents have shared these things with us. Coming to the end. Kamu. Kamu is a, it's a group of men, uh, all leaders of the different churches around the country. And we have a meeting the first Monday of every month. So all the churches are represented, or a good number of the churches are represented. And um, actually, our son Andrew is, has just been asked to be, be president of this group of men. Um, and so they organize conferences, uh, deal with receiving money for missionaries, distributing the, to the missionaries, um, issues that come up um, in churches or among churches are dealt with. And so this is a group of men who are um, comprometidos. Committed, thank you, <laughs> committed to the Lord's work. And here we have the ladies side of it. Uh, they organize a yearly retreat, it, just, it was held in September. So this year, that's the group. They were close to 400 uh, ladies during the day, 360 staying overnight. Uh, so that is a nice ministry. And then also, Uruguay is sending missionaries to other countries. And so here, there are two missionaries that are in Paraguay, right on the Brazilian border, north of Asuncion. So they're working with indigenous tribes there. And they're receiving regular visits from different ones in Uruguay. And on this occasion, our son and Robert's son-in-law uh, went up with a group of Bible school students and helped building this room for meetings. And so they, here you have the two missionaries uh, 
giving a Bible class to kids. And then also Kamu, uh, working together with churches. Here is a new church plant in the capital city. And they had outgrown their garage. They purchased a, an old building. And so the churches got together monetarily as well as physically to help uh, this new building. And there it is finished. So uh, a lovely group of young people. Eunice and I were there two months ago and enjoyed that fellowship very much. Eunice with the ladies. So they had their uh, midday meal together. While the men, we went and had our meal. And guess what we ate? You said it. <laughs> but a lovely, a lovely group of Christians. Uh, going to a meeting one Sunday, we just couldn't help but stop and take this picture. So uh, the rainbow, of course, speaks of God's promise. And he has said that his word will not return to him void. It will fulfill the purpose that he has sent it out for. And he has sent it out for salvation. We know that his word will judge those who refuse it. Unfortunately, there are those, like we read today, the faith is not of everybody. Everybody doesn't have faith. But we thank God that the Lord keeps his promises. He has kept his promises to us as a couple working these 48 years. Uh, we've had bread on the table every day. And we know that the Lord has supplied things even in advance before we knew that we were going to need them. There are different stories that we could share, but I'm watching the clock here, and I'm taking too long. We're going to be hungry. <laughs> so the promise I'm going to finish with this slide praying, surrounding the world with prayer. The Lord wants his word to cover every place in this planet, as well as in Uruguay. So let us be joined in prayer for Uruguay, for Canada, because Canada needs it as much as Uruguay and every other country in the world. Thank you very much.